I know this service is long, but you only turn five one time, right? We never have another five fifth birthday, so it's, I wouldn't have it any other way. We do have a dinner today. We were going to transform this gymnasium into a cafeteria after the service. Brother Tony's been out there smoking meat and all kinds. Look at you guys. I just got through praying, y'all thinking that way. Meat and different things and turkeys and all this great stuff we're going to eat. And how many of you know there ain't no much and better, Ben, than a church meal? Amen. And we'll have that immediately after the service. Sister Rachel, if you'll give a report to my wife, I'd like to know how much so I can let the people know we're sending to Africa today when we get everything done. I, I, I want to preach just for a couple minutes. Go ahead, let me have it, brother, if you will. I, I don't have a lot of strength. I'm, I'm thinking 10 minutes, but I don't want to be one of those lying preachers that turns into 20 minutes. God may have something else planned. But I begin to search and I begin to ask God what he would have me share with us today as a church and where we are. And looking back at the memories of, of five years ago, we started, ironically, it was on July 10th, which is Brother Bill's birthday. And that was our first service there in Woodbine. And I would like to recognize everyone that was in that first service there at Woodbine five years ago when we just started in our humble beginnings of nothing. Would you stand to your feet so that we could give you honor today? Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord. You say that ain't much, but that's all right. Little is much when God's in control, amen? You want to know what I can't wait is when we get to our 10th anniversary and I can say everybody that was at the 5th anniversary and we got to be in some stadium somewhere because we don't have the room, we can all stand and declare the goodness of God today, amen? But where do we go from here? What do we do? What do we say? You know, I, I, I think of so many different things that I could have said today. The Lord's helped us and we heard from Pastor Yvonne Barbano at the very beginning of the service. Some of you may not have been here. The little restoration ministries in Ecuador. We support him and he loves our church and is planning as soon as he can get his visa lined out to come back and be with us. And we've been able to help the Browns and, and do what they're doing there. We planted the church there in Woodbine, uh, able to plant eight different churches. The Lord laid it upon my heart two years ago that by the, by the time that, that, uh, that this, this decade is over, that we will have planted 100 churches. Amen? You say, preacher, you're crazy. You are too, or you wouldn't be sitting here today because there's something that you're drawn to because of the power and the presence of the Holy Ghost. We need to quit putting damper numbers on God and start shooting for the moon. Amen? You say, what happens if you do? What happens if we don't? We're going to do everything we can to try. Oh, we only did 88 churches. Well, God's not going to be disappointed in that. And He's going to honor our effort, amen, in all that we do. I thank the Lord that in our five years of our church, we have seen 175 people saved and 176 people baptized in water in our first five years. To God be the glory for that, amen. There are over... 30 ministries that operate. You know we have our Christian school and our daycare and our outreach ministries. The Lord laid a, the K initiative on us this month. We just started that we want to reach 1,000 people outside of the walls of our church, not inside, every month. And with our nursing home and prison and, and even going into apartment complexes and having churches the other night, uh, we want to reach people for the Lord. He said to go to the highways and the hedges and compel the lost to come in. You see, honey, I don't, I don't think we've got time to play around. We've got to be about the Father's business, and we've got to be busy because I still believe that Jesus is coming, and He's coming very soon. Amen? And we live in a world that needs a church greater than ever before. They don't need just another church, but they need the church of the living God to step up and be what He would have it to be. And I begin to search the scriptures, Ronnie, and I begin to search and I begin to pray. I spent a lot of time in my office this week. I was uh, pretty out of it Wednesday and Thursday, but Friday and Saturday I laid on my face before God and I said, God, what would you have me to share with your people today? 
And the Lord took me to the 54th chapter of the book of Isaiah. It's just a couple verses. I'm not going to ask you to stand. I'm not going to be long at all today. But this is exactly what the Lord spoke to me this morning uh, in the wee hours of the morning and yesterday in the afternoon to share with you today what God spoke through the prophet Isaiah. That is for restoration ministries here in 2021. We can, we can picture God himself speaking directly to us, directly to every one of us this morning as he puts this word of God that he burnt in Isaiah chapter 54, verse number 2. I'm, I'm reading from the New Literal Translation because I, lo- I always King James, but I love exactly the way that it said here. Listen to what the word of God declared in Isaiah chapter 54, verse number 2. He said, enlarge your house, build in addition, spread out your home, and spare no expense. For you will soon be bursting at the seams. Your descendants will occupy other nations and resettle the ruined cities. Fear not, for you will no longer live in shame. Do not be afraid. There is more Uh, There is no more disgrace for you. You will no longer remember the shame of your youth and the sorrows of the whirlwind. How many of you have been through some whirlwinds in your life? But God is speaking to the church of the living God. What did he say there in verse number 2? He didn't say downsize. He said enlarge your house. Start thinking outside the box. Start doing things nobody else wants to do. Start getting people nobody else wants. He said build an addition. Spread your home and spare no expense. You say preacher, what are we going to do? We going to clamp down coming out of a pandemic? No, we're going to do more for God than we've ever done before. We're going to spread it more than we can and when we don't think Think we've got enough dollars we'll get it into a hundred pennies and we'll spread those hundred pennies as many places as we can go somebody shout praise the Lord you see God is saying prepare for more I don't believe the best days of the church mark are behind us God is saying prepare for more. Prepare for more. I woke up in the wee hours of the morning. Boy, did the devil attack me last night. But I woke up in the wee hours of the morning declaring, prepare for more. You see, it's not always what you see or what you feel. But in the spirit realm, It's what God has declared. Thank you, Sister Jackson, for for talking about declaring just a few nights ago when we were down in Spider Creek ministering to those folks. If you look at things the way they are, you don't always see them the way God sees them. I want you to think about that. I think of the weather. And man, one thing about living in southeast Kentucky, we never know from day to day what the weather is going to be. It may be sunny in 98 one day and spitting snow in 35 the next morning. Can somebody say amen? Y'all believe that. You know it. We've lived through it this year. But thank God we can sometimes look at the forecast and we can see what's happening. And when all those around us have on their big coats and they've got on their toboggans and they've got on their gloves and they've got on their scarves and they've got on all the things to keep them warm. You can walk in the room in a pair of flip-flops and, and decent modest shorts and a short sleeve shirt 
and people can look at you and say, what in the world are you doing? Do you not see that it's 28 degrees out there? And you can say, it may be that way now, but the sun's getting ready to come up and God's getting ready to move and the sun is getting ready to shine. Weeping indoors for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. And everybody else may be with all the drag and we may be with just the flip-flops on. It's because we see something that no one else sees and God is saying be prepared. I've got something in store for you today. Amen. You see, Noah built an ark for a flood when it had not ever even rained. You see, David beat up and destroyed a giant before he ever became a man. Mary was conceived of the Holy Ghost and delivered the Christ child long before she ever knew a man. And what God is preparing in the hearts and the mind of His people may not make sense to this world, but He that is within me is greater than He that is within the world. Amen. I want you to think about it. But God always said, Leanna's favorite verse is Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 that says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and all its righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. You see, we all just want to focus on the righteousness and everything being added to us. But we've got to seek ye first the kingdom of God. We can look at Psalm 37 and 4 that declares that if we delight ourselves in the laws of the Lord, He'll give us the desires of our heart. We love the part that He'll give us the desires of our heart. But to be prepared, we've got to make sure that we are delighting ourselves in the laws of the Lord. Can someone say amen? He said, knock and the door will be open to you. Man, it don't do no good if you come to my house and you just stand at the door and you don't knock. I don't care if I see your car come up in the driveway. Until you knock, I'm not getting up to open the door because I don't know what you're doing on the other side. And how many times does God have something great and mighty for you? And he's put you in front of the door of opportunity. And he said, all you've got to do is knock and the door will be open. But instead of God's people getting up and knocking on the door where he opens doors no man can open and he shuts doors no man can shut, we stand there looking like a deer in a headlock. He said, knock and the door shall be open unto you. There's some people that need things in their life to day if you want things to change in your situation get up and knock on the door and say God I'm ready to move and do what you want me to do he said honor your father and your mother that your days would be long upon this earth we want our days to be long upon this earth but many have failed to honor their father and their mother I believe beyond the shadow of a doubt that as we stand on the, on the wonderful place where we are, I thank God where we are. I thank God what He's done. I thank God for everything that He's given us. But I feel the Holy Spirit wind blowing and saying, keep your feet grounded in me, saith God. I feel Him saying, stay humble before God. Resist the devil and he will flee. Don't let jealousy, don't let corruption, don't let character that is not of God seep into your life and keep you from being what God would have you to be. But stand firm in the integrity of the cross and when you seek and when you delight and when you knock and when you honor, God will do great and mighty things for you. Somebody say amen. Amen. And there were other things that I wanted to share today that I feel like that I just need to skip over in closing this morning because I really feel in my spirit that the Holy Spirit is wanting to move mightily 
in the life of some people that are in this room today. And I know that we've got a meal, and I know that it's homecoming, and, and we, we've got a place out there to get your picture taken with your family, and everything will look great, and everything will be fine. But we can't miss out on the move of God today and what He has for us and what He has for you. We can't miss out on what He wants to speak to the church of the living God today. And there's some of you today that need to take this Scripture to your heart. I want to read it again if it would be all right. There in Isaiah chapter 54, verse number 2, 3, and 4. I want you to stand with me, if you will, all over the building. Please, no moving around. Would you just begin to close your eyes just for a moment and ponder of the goodness of God What is God trying to speak to you today, brother? What is God trying to speak to you today, sister? Listen to what His Word said here in my text. Enlarge your house. God's talking to somebody today. God's speaking to someone today. Enlarge your house. Build an addition. Spread out your home and spare no expense. For you will soon be bursting at the seams. Your descendants will occupy other nations and resettle the ruined cities. Fear not, for you will no longer live in shame. Don't be afraid. There is no more disgrace for you. You will no longer remember the shame of your youth and the sorrows of your widowhood. Holy Spirit, I ask you to speak to the hearts of your people this morning as we come to this special time of invitation. Lord, we've got enough men and women of God in this room today to raise the dead.